Hey, welcome back to the channel. So a little while ago, I did a video about using Linux on a 2012 MacBook Pro, and many of you asked for an install video after that video, so that's what we're doing today. I'll be installing Kubuntu, which is Ubuntu distribution with the KDE desktop. Uh, if you're using a different desktop environment like GNOME, Budgie, XFCE, etc., the process is going to be pretty much the same as what I go over here, but some of the options and the applications may be different in the desktop environment that you're using. Before we get started, you'll need an eight gigabyte or larger USB stick, thumb drive, flash drive, whatever the heck you wanna call it. So now let's get into installing Linux on a 2012 MacBook Pro. All right, again, these first few steps can be done on whatever operating system you're on. So step number one is to download the version of Linux that you wanna use on your MacBook Pro. If you've never done this before, I recommend that you get Ubuntu or some derivative of it. Regardless, whatever version of Linux, whatever distribution you get, get the ISO file so that you can burn that to your thumb drive and make it a bootable thumb drive in the following steps. Step number two, download and install Etcher. Just click on the link down in the description. It'll take you to the Etcher site, download it, install it. It works on Linux, Mac, or Windows. Once you get it installed, launch it up, and in the first section, we're gonna select the ISO that we downloaded previously. The next option, we're gonna select the drive that we wanna burn this to. Be very careful that you select that thumb drive that you put in your computer for this purpose. If you accidentally select a different drive, it's gonna wipe out that drive and you might lose some data, so be careful what drive you select here and then just hit the flash button. Now, depending on what operating system you're on, it may or may not ask you for your credentials. If it does, go ahead and put those in and then just let Etcher do its thing. All right, so Etcher is all done, so we can close that down and pop out that USB drive, put it into your MacBook Pro and boot the MacBook Pro holding the option button. You'll be brought to a boot menu and you wanna select the EFI boot. That's what's gonna boot you into the live version of Linux. Now again, depending on what you're installing, this may look a little different, but we wanna to get to the point where we have the option to install Linux on our hard drive. Once you get there, click that and start going through the prompts. If you're using a distribution based off Ubuntu, eventually you'll get to a screen that has an option that lets you install third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware. You definitely wanna make sure you check that because the installer will not recognize the Wi-Fi card in the MacBook Pro out of the box, but after installing this third-party drivers, uh, that will work after we restart the computer. So make sure you check that one. Eventually, you'll get to a screen that asks you how you want to install this, whether you want to use the entire disk or install it alongside. There's several options here for the purposes of this tutorial. I'm going to assume that you want to wipe out Mac OS and install Linux. So we're gonna select use entire disk. This is gonna wipe out the disk and install just Linux. If you want me to do a tutorial on how to dual boot with Mac OS and Linux, I'm happy to do that, but I'm not covering that in this video. At this point, we can just go through the rest of the installation screens, create your user, machine name, all that kind of stuff, and let the install uh, complete. And once it's completed, go ahead and restart. It's probably gonna prompt you to remove the USB drive, go ahead and do that and restart your Mac. Once the MacBook Pro restarts, you'll eventually get to the login prompt. Go ahead and put your username and password that you created during the installation and you will be brought to your desktop. Now notice that there is now a Wi-Fi icon at the bottom right because we installed those third-party drivers and we now can recognize the Wi-Fi card. Go ahead and click on that connect to your Wi-Fi network or plug in your ethernet cable if you're wired, because now we're gonna go and get some updates that are probably available for your new installation. Now this next part, again, is gonna be a little bit different depending on the desktop environment that you're using, and you may get prompted that there are updates available, but if not, we're gonna check for manually, and in Kubuntu, we're gonna click on the arrow in the taskbar, uh, then select updates. This is gonna open Discover, the package manager. And once it opens, it'll show you all the updates that are available. Just click on update all. That'll download all the most recent updates for your operating system. Now during the install, you may see your Wi-Fi connection drop, but just let it go. What's happening is it's updating your Wi-Fi driver. So it disconnects it, updates the driver, and then it reconnects. Uh, and then you are good to go after that. Just let that finish, and once it finishes, 
we're gonna go ahead and restart our machine. So the computer is going to restart again and go ahead and log in. And that's it. At this point, the system is installed and fully functional. You can install apps with Discover or whatever package manager you use in your distribution. If you want to use something other than Ubuntu based, you can use something that's Arch based like Manjaro. Process is very similar for the install. If you're interested in seeing how I did some of the customization that you're seeing right now, just leave a comment below and I can definitely put something together that's just some KDE customization. Now, hopefully you found this useful and informative. If you did, please consider subscribing or at least hitting that thumbs up. And thanks so much for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video.